Internet, welcome back. I'm Steve from GraphicDesignerTips.com. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you all in Adobe Muse how to work with type, and specifically through a program called Adobe Typekit, which is actually a plugin to Adobe Muse. Now, on the screen is a website I started building last night, and if you see on the top right, uh, well, basically throughout the page, but mainly on the top right, we got a couple different fonts going on, just because this is actually a logo, a PNG file, and we have a couple different fonts going on, and web designers might be looking at this and saying, where do these fonts come from? Are those images, or are they real text? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now that these are real text, and this is the coolest thing about this new part of Adobe Muse, is uh, that you can, you can use real text in it as opposed to having it as images. Because when it comes to SEO and a search engine being able to read your website, it needs to read uh, actual text. It cannot read images. I mean, you could put alternate text on images and stuff like that with keywords, but reading paragraphs and bodies of text and, and headers, H1 tags and such, you need it to be actual type. So throughout the years, the way that this has been done on websites, it's we've been using web safe fonts. We've been using Arial, Helvetica, Geneva, Georgia. These fonts are disgusting. They're terrible. They're ugly. So in this new Adobe Type Kit, we have over 500 fonts that we could choose from for our headings, for our paragraphs. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this real quick. I'm going to delete these two text boxes. We're going to come up here to the text tool, which we can also hit the letter T for. And we're going to create a text box. And I'm going to click Contact Us Today. All right. We're going to make that baby larger. We're going to center it. All right. Now we're going to Option, click, and Shift, and it's going to drag it down. We're going to create another one. Put my area code. Five, five, five. I don't know the other number by heart and I wouldn't want to mess it up because then somebody might get like tons of phone calls because of this video. So I will show you right now how to turn it into a web safe font that is not one of those boring ones. Now before I do that, the only other thing I want to point out is system fonts. On our computer we have tons of our own system fonts. I have fonts that I've found, you know, free fonts throughout the internet or fonts that I can use uh, in design or throughout the internet. Um, and we can actually use this in this program, but there is a downside. I'm going to show you right now. We're going to double, we're going to click and highlight this text and we're going to come into our font and change it. Uh, we're going to show web safe fonts. These are those ones I spoke to you about. And then we have system fonts. Now, Next to system fonts, they did this for a reason. They put it in parentheses. It says exports as an image. Well, what did I say about two minutes ago? When a search engine is trying to read keywords on your website and it sees images, especially text as images, it's not going to read anything. It's going to hurt the hell out of your SEO. Um, the only time you're going to want to do this is if you design a logo for somebody with a specific font that only you have because the Adobe Type Kit, the 500 fonts I told you about, they're not fonts that you've ever recognized. I've never seen any of them. So they're all fonts that Adobe has put together and they're awesome fonts, but they may not be the same font that you designed somebody's logo in. So you technically, if you have to do headings, they want all the headings in the website to be this special font. Well, yeah, you can come into system fonts, but you need to let these people know it's gonna hurt their SEO because headings, H1 tags, are the most important for, an, for a search engine. Um, and if it's turning into an image, it's not reading it. So, But it does allow you the option. That's the cool part. At least it allows you the option. So we're not going to do that in this case. We're going to come up to web fonts. And I'm going to add web fonts. And then you come in here, it's going to show you different categories. It's going to show you sans serif, serif, uh, a slab serif. We got script. And then we got some fun ones over here. And at the end, the, the best part is if, if you're really confused, you don't know which ones to choose from, these are recommended. Recommended headings are here and recommended paragraph text are here. So we're going to select Droid for the paragraph and we're going to select Cooper Black for the heading. And the little check mark goes next to it. We're going to hit OK. All right, so now two font families were added to the web fonts menu. Thank you. Hit OK. And with our text selected, we're going to click down and I'm going to click the the Cooper one first because that's the fatter font 
And it's cool because look, we have an italic and we have a regular. It's already a fat font, so that's why there's no bold um, attached to it. And not all these fonts have these other uh, available options. You know, some of them, they don't have italic or regular. And if you try to insist on on forcing it to go italic by coming up here and just hitting italic when there isn't an actual version of it, it's going to screw up a little bit. So that's a tip. Just remember that. Um, we're going to select this as italic. Um, that actually goes up there. All right, cool. All right. Um, it kind of works with the site. It's fun. It's a little playful. We're going to highlight the number, and we're going to come into the second one. What was the second one? It was Droid. All right. We're going to do Droid regular. All right, because we don't want to bold everything. That's that's you want to have some you know contrast. Even you know contrast is does doesn't just have to do with colors. It has to do with everything. So um, we have yeah that font the font actually technically that font don't work on this website, but it's just showing you how the the whole type kit works. And uh, we're gonna preview this last thing. We're gonna hit preview. And this is the built-in, basically, browser kind of preview that Adobe Muse has. Uh, I'm not too impressed by it because I've seen some things move around and shift that I don't like very much. So I always like the true version. I like to preview this page in a browser. All right, so looks good. It looks good in Firefox. It should look good in, in Firefox on another computer or Safari. Um, I don't know if it's guaranteed, especially if you're using a really old browser, but... I mean, I I would say that, I mean, every website I've des been designing through this program already, and it's been at least a handful or more, that they've all looked good in every browser, and, and it's, it's really just a wonderful program. So uh, I hope this is pushing you over the edge to try Adobe Muse. If you have any questions, comments, definitely leave them below. Uh, if you feel like this video helped you, like the video, plus one it, and uh, definitely share it with your buddies. And that's it. I'm Steve from graphicdesignertips.com. Have a wonderful night. Peace.